Hi guys, welcome back. This is Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design. And today I'm going to show you how to do this tumbler that I really didn't have a name for. So I'm going to call it Wood Grain Foils and Peekaboo. Oh my! <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, I'm going to start off with a 25 ounce straight tumbler from Stainless Depot. I did sand, wash, and prep this tumbler. Um, I did prep it with a white spray paint. And this product that you're seeing me peel off is a double-sided adhesive sheet that I purchased on Amazon. I will leave it in the link below. Essentially, it's like a giant piece of double-sided tape that you can cut to fit your full tumbler. It's about, it comes in a, um, sheets like um, printable vinyl, and you put it on your Cricut mat, run it through your Cricut, or your silhouette cutter and you cut out a design that you want you peel off the one side of the double-sided adhesive and apply that whole sheet with the backing to your tumbler with the backing facing up this is a design that I have made in my Cricut design space using a geometric pattern that I found there that they had available I do subscribe to my Cricut design space and I made this little design um, to fit my tumbler. And here you're seeing me just pull off the sections of the little diamonds there that I want to expose the double-sided adhesive. I really hope this is making sense, you guys. It's essentially like double-sided tape. So you're putting a sticky side down to the tumbler and the backing that is cut faces up. And I'm going to peel up the sections that I want to apply my gold leaf to. Um, and it is so easy for this style tumbler. If you guys do tan grams or um, plaid tumblers or any of the tumblers where you have to apply multiple colors of glitter or foils, this double-sided adhesive sheet is perfect for this. Now, this is the first time I tried this and there was some trial and error, but I knew I was gonna make this into a wood grain peekaboo. So I'm okay with that little area there you see um, on the right side of the screen that looks like um, it's kind of messy looking. I'm perfectly fine with that. This was my first try of this and I know that the orange copper colored foil is sticking to parts that I don't want it to stick to, but essentially it's perfectly fine. So I'm just using this little needle tool that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I really love this tool for you get two of them in a pack for only a dollar, and I use this so much for my projects. Anyway, um, I'm just peeling up the sections that I want to foil this copper color. These are the um, gold leaf foil sheets that I purchased on Amazon. I've shown them in um, multiple other videos before, but I'll leave a link in the description below for this pack of sheets. Um, it comes with so many colors, and they're so pretty. And you're, basically, I'm just burnishing that foil right into that adhesive. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The only thing about this project is, is it is messy because anytime you work with foils, oh, it's messy. You're going to get it all over you. You're going to look like you went through a glitter factory if you use these foils, but that's okay. <laughs> I always have it in my hair, on my face. Whenever I come out of my studio, my husband laughs at me. So this is highly sped up for time purposes. This video is already really long, but I wanted to, do show, to show you my process. This pattern kind of reminds me of a Moroccan pattern. It's various circles and diamonds in a repeating pattern. And um, it also has like a floral kind of look about it. You'll see here when I do the next uh, peeling and foiling. It reminds me of a Persian rug. <laughs> but I was really happy with this product. I would do recommend it. Like I said, I will link it in the description box below. I would have shown you the package, but this literally came in a giant Ziploc bag with the sheets in it. And it didn't, it just had a tiny little shipping label on it. Didn't even have the name brand or a cover sheet to show you with the branding. So, um, like I said, I purchased it on Amazon, so you'll be able to find it uh, below in my links there. I really love intricate designs like these. 
Um, I know some people kind of shy away from it, and that's perfectly fine to each their own. Um, I just, I don't know, there's something soothing about doing a pattern or weeding that's really intricate. <laughs> I love the colors that I'm using here. I'm going to go with, um, this is like an orange copper, and then I'm going to go into a really pretty ruby red, and then finally a true gold, and it just gives me fall vibes. You could even use it as Christmas because it has just the pretty metallic look that I, I always think goes with Christmas. And you could even stop right there. I think that that pattern is so cool, but I had already cut out all the pieces, so... These are the little petals I'm pulling off here. I'm gonna put my red foil on these and you'll see my process and how quick this is. The most intricate part is just lifting off the backing like I am with my little needle tool. And it's so easy to burnish that foil down. One little side note, you guys, if you're going to work with this foil, I would highly recommend not doing it next to anything where you have wet paint, wet glue, or wet resin, like your cups on the turner. Make sure you're doing this in an area where there's not a fan running, and make sure you're not around anything that you don't want to be contaminated, because this will contaminate your other projects. Now there you can see the petals and how pretty that red looks. I really love this red metallic. I do apologize for not putting in the video me actually placing this, um, the double-sided adhesive um, pattern um, on my tumbler. I thought I did record it, but I couldn't find it in any of the footage that I had. So I probably will do another one of these using the double-sided adhesive sheets, and I will make sure that I have that in the footage. I'll probably do a different pattern of course, but um, I think I want to do a plaid tumbler with it. I think that, that would be fun. I've never done plaid tumbler before and I think that this product would be great for that. So I will be sure to show that in a video in the future. Look at how pretty that red is. And now you can see the concentric circles of my pattern. And that's even pretty too, you could leave it like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and peel up this um, white outline. Uh, it is a little bit tedious. I was trying to get it in one strip, but it wasn't really working out right here. <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward here in a minute and you'll um, kind of see a bigger peel <laughs> if you like those things. There we go. When I do my next video for this, I'll make sure that I show you start to finish on actually cutting the vinyl, the double-sided adhesive sheet. Um, so you can get the whole feel of how, how I set my Cricut to cut through and everything else. So I'll make sure that I do that in future. So keep keep an eye out for that. Um, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscription 
and the, maybe the bell because that'll let you know when I put new videos up and um, that way you'll know when I have that next tutorial with this particular product. Now this is just the true gold that I'm rubbing on here. I'm rubbing, I'm laying it on the large portion and I'm just rubbing away um, the parts that, you know, I don't know how to say this. I'm rubbing the whole sheet of gold and it's going to move into the areas that are still sticky. Does that make sense? So it's going to fill in those white areas. Right there you can see the spot that I messed up on. I think that that was the area where the two sides overlap. I'm perfectly fine with it. It looks fine once the gold is on it. Um, but like I said, this is going to be a peekaboo wood grain, so I'm going to cover that right up anyway. And there are a couple areas here, you can see I'm going to go peel those up that I didn't peel up with the rest of it. It was kind of hard to see because it's white on white, so um, I'm just going to fill those in. If you guys love bling and if you love shiny goodness, these foils are for you. <laughs> because they are absolutely beautiful. You get so many sheets for a very low price. So give them a try, guys. I mean, you can use these on so many different things. I've had these for probably a year and a half, possibly two years now, and I haven't even made a dent in my pile. So there they are for now. Now, I did not apply the adhesive double-sided, double-sided, adhesive sheets to the bottom. So I'm going to go with my tacket over and over and I'm going to touch up any areas that does not have the metallic foil. The bottom, the seam, and then there's a couple little spots that I guess just needed some touching up. This is my little glass palette. Don't mind the paint. It is completely dry. I am only using the tacket. So I'm using my little Mod Podge brush and I'm just putting a thin coat of tacket along the bottom and up the side just to kind of cover that seam up. Like I said, it's not going to matter if it isn't perfect. And I'm going to go down that seam also. I just want to fill it in completely so there's no white spots showing. And I'm just going to use the gold to fill that in. If you guys want to be more intricate with this and uh, more perfect, of course, you can go in with each foil. That's completely up to you. But I knew what my end product was going to be, um, so I'm not too fussy on this. I kind of am a messy crafter. I kind of go by the seat of my pants. I think I've said that before. And, you know, sometimes mistakes look beautiful in the end, so you got to just give it a try. Jump in feet first and give it a try. If it looks horrible... <laughs> Once you're completely done with it, then you can put it in the chuck it bucket. But until then, you know, keep going. Um, I wasn't completely sure about this tumbler, but I think it does look pretty in the end. Still think it needs something. So when you guys see the final product, maybe you can let me know if it needs something else. Oh, that little extra something else. I'm just patting on a little bit here and there to cover up any areas that I may have missed. Now I'm going to completely smooth this down to make sure it's completely smooth. And then I'm going to go in and put a layer of epoxy on and let that cure fully. Then go in and spray paint just like I'm showing you here. That spray paint's nice and dry. My cup is nice and smooth. And now we're going to wood grain. You know, it's always a shame you have to spray paint over a beautiful tumbler that you just spent a ton of time on. But that's the nature of wood grain peekaboos. So I'm using Redwood by Tim Holtz. I've been wanting to use this one. I love wood graining. 
and this redwood is absolutely gorgeous this deep red mahogany redwood um, color and I really thought it would add a lot to the tumbler since there's a lot of red hues um, going with that warm theme you know autumn uh, sweater weather <laughs> so I don't know that kind of reminded me of it so um, I was a little surprised at how bright red it looks but it does look a little bit more wood color red wood color um, hence the name um, later on you'll see at the more you put on you know more layers you put on it does darken a little bit so when I first was doing this it reminded me of a bloody Halloween tumbler <laughs> but it gets better I promise I promise so just use a little rough chip brush and run your brush up and down the tumbler until the alcohol ink is dry and it will make this lovely wood grain I'll link my other wood grain tumblers um, with this video and you can check those out too Let's see the ones that I've made this video is sped up I am not splashing that paint that alcohol ink all over the place it I'm actually going a lot slower than that um, if you were to go as fast as it looks like I'm going right now you would have red alcohol ink splatters everywhere and you look like a crime scene so <laughs> take your time um, alcohol ink does dry pretty quickly but you still could have some splatters so just be mindful of that don't wear your favorite t-shirt <laughs> if you're doing wood grain trust me I've been I've done it so once I have that fully done I'm gonna go back in make sure I don't have any white spots or some areas that I want to touch up you can add the, you know another strip of alcohol ink over top of what you've already done it just reactivates it and makes those nice um, textures that look like wood So that's been that's completely dry. So now I'm going to go in and do the peekaboo or the geode, or whatever you want to call it. I call it a, I guess it's kind of a geode, but you're going to use 100% acetone. Um, this acetone I'm using here in the little white bottle I purchased at the dollar store. It's nail polish remover acetone, but it does not seem as strong as my other acetone. That I normally use you can see that it's taking off just a very slight layer of the you know the alcohol ink and my paint so I do switch to my other acetone here in a minute I purchased a large I don't even know how big it is a um one from the hardware store 100% acetone in a little metal tin can and I put it in my little pump bottle You'll see in a second it works so much better than that one from the dollar store you just this one works you just have to use a lot of elbow grease and I don't have time for that so <laughs> here it is it's in the little purple cap you can see how much faster this is gonna go watch it just works it's like butter I tell you guys it's like butter so I'm just using little pieces of paper towel I like the texture of the paper towel it tends to pull off that paint better um, but you can use paper towel coffee filters whatever you have on hand and I'm just trying my best to not smear the alcohol ink on the outside and just clean up to show that beautiful foil 
pattern that I made underneath. I'm trying not to show too much of the white paint. You'll see what I do here in a minute to fix that, but if you kind of try to control the paper towel as best you can, you just have to maneuver it. Um, don't put too much acetone on your paper towel. You don't want it to drip down the side of your tumbler. That will totally ruin your wood grain. <laughs> but um, just try to control it as best you can. You are eventually, I mean, it's, it's impossible to do this perfect. I would love to talk to anyone who's ever done this perfectly. <laughs> so you do have to go in and touch up a little bit of the wood grain around the geode portion once you're finished. And I'll show you how I do that. I'm just choosing a lovely, aesthetically pleasing look. It almost looks like the wood has been like peeled away to reveal this beautiful treasure underneath. I'll let you watch. I'll stop blabbering. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I do have to say one thing. You remove the majority of the alcohol ink and paint with the acetone. That'll get down. And then to clean it up, you use your 90% um, uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean up any smudges that the paint might leave. So just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, and it will make, make it nice and shiny again. So um, you'll see me doing that. My alcohol is in the pink cap, and my acetone is in the purple cap. So that's my rubbing alcohol. I'm going to go in and just kind of clean that up, make sure there's no cloudy areas left over where the paint kind of sat there. And I'm going to try to push the white areas back a little so that it will not look as prominent. don't really like the white to be this thick, but it's really hard to get a clean edge when you're doing a wood grain with this style. So I'm going to take my um, Redwood alcohol ink and first I'm going to dab it on my <laughs> my chip brush to see if that works and eventually I just dab it on my cup but I'm um, just going to fill in those areas. Now don't worry it's not going to stay like this because as I was covering the white I was like uh, I don't really like that I think it does need a little bit of the white, but I don't want as much white showing as there was. So I'm just kind of re-wood graining that area. If you get a little bit on your um, peekaboo, that's okay. You can use rubbing alcohol to wipe that off, and I do here in just a bit. Just go and just be real careful and mindful of it. You're not going to go as crazy as you did in the beginning, or as crazy as I did in the beginning. <laughs> If you hear banging, it's my husky trying to knock on the door, so I apologize for that.
I think this was the most stressful part of the tumbler. Stressful because sometimes I have an idea in my head and it isn't always working. Um, I kept going now and eventually it looks the way I want it. So don't get angry. If you're getting angry with your craft project, put it down and walk away. Come back the next day with fresh eyes because I'm telling you guys, crafting should be fun. <laughs> It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be a stress reliever, and if you're getting frustrated with it, it's time to take a break. So you can see that by covering up that white, there's not enough delineation between the metallic and the wood grain. So I am going to go in and clean it up with some rubbing alcohol. and. Um, expose the white edges but in a more controlled way. Uh, you'll see that here in just a minute. So I have my paper towel, little pieces, and some Q-tips there. And I'm just going to clean up the alcohol ink that got on my peekaboo area that I want nice and shiny and not so red. And then I'm going to actually push back a little bit and create the white lines in a more, the white edges I should say, in a more um, controlled manner so that they're not as thick. I just, I wanted them there, I just didn't want them in such a thick ribbon that it, as it was. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sorry this video is so long, but this is such an intricate design that I couldn't help it. <laughs> Those are my dogs. <laughs> So just keep using rubbing alcohol along that edge until you get that edge to be white. It looks a little pink right now, but it'll be white as long as you just keep on going and just be real careful. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Some people were asking me if I seal my alcohol inks before I put my epoxy on them. I do not. I do not seal my alcohol ink wood grains before I put epoxy on because one time I did and I used I use spray seal and it ruined my wood grain. So there it is right now and I'm going to go ahead and put two full layers of epoxy resin on and let them cure fully. And here is the final tumbler. I really love the color and the vibes this one puts out. Let me know if you guys think that this needs a little something extra. I'm not sure. I really love it. I think it looks like really pretty wood grain. So just let me know. Thanks so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one. 
If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscription button. Um, hit the bell for notifications when I upload new videos. And give me a comment, a question, whatever you want in the comments below. Thank you so much, guys. Happy crafting.